Well, good evening, folks, and welcome along. Um, how many of you are here for a B2B session for the first time? Great. Okay. How many were here when we had um, the last session with Erica Crawford? Excellent. That's good. Sorry, I'm Chris, and that's Deb, and we're the two facilitators for this program, for those of you that, um, that are new. In terms of um, what we've been talking about as we've been going through these sessions, we've used this particular model as a framework for thinking about the idea and the opportunity that um, you may have in the back of your mind that you're going to bring to the front of your mind in terms of writing for the ideas challenge or for entering into the business um, planning competition. And um, this particular framework looks at the entrepreneurial process from four points of view, um, in terms of the founder, in terms of the um, opportunity, the resources and the team. And tonight's session is focusing um, a little bit around um, resources and um, more broadly in terms of um, thinking about what you need in order to make your idea viable. And so as we, um, as you know from coming along to a session with Mike Hutchinson, we talked about what was it that would take your idea from being an idea into an opportunity. It would need to be attractive, durable, timely, anchored in a product or service, and add value. And the customer must be uppermost in your mind. And we talked a little bit in terms of thinking about not what you're selling, but what the customer is buying. Then um, we moved on and had a session from Erica Crawford. And normally we would have asked a specific question, but we thought given that it was three weeks ago, for those of you that came along, the question simply needed to be, what were two or three things that you can remember? Anything that you can remember, going back three weeks to Erica's presentation. So, remember when I said all those people put up their hands that had been to the presentation? If you were one of the people that didn't put up your hand, you now need to find somebody that was at that particular presentation. And just for a minute to two minutes, please talk with the person sitting next to you in terms of what were two or three things that you can remember from Erica's presentation. Just two or three minutes. All behind you. All, all behind you, in front of you. Just don't talk to Andy. He wasn't here. The model that she used, rather than buying thing and grow your brand. She, she got she bought drinks from other people and then they the one on it. As a result, there is a much higher return of profit per dollar. She said something about just normal and you get about 6% um, return on every dollar you invest in the wine industry. But with the model she used, she got to make it I remember that specifically. <laughs> presentation a couple of weeks ago. Remember it was anything. Yeah. <laughs> this is not a trick question. Wine. 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 Yeah. Wine. 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 in terms of thinking about business opportunities that you might be interested in? Pretty innovative in terms of thinking about who influences the decision. So she spent a lot of time with getting her wine into restaurants, but realised that whilst they might be on the menu, the people who influence the final decision were the waitressing staff or the waiting staff and the bar staff. So very much worked in relation to your comment about relationship, very much worked with those people so that they were advocates and great supporters of the, the product. 
What else? Believe and know what you're doing. Believe and know what you're doing. Yeah. So she had a very strong sense of belief. And also her and Kim were uh, um, going, thinking ahead to next week. A really interesting team in terms of the skills and um, expertise that they brought together. Kim on the, on the wine side, her on the marketing, sales, distribution and business side. Yep. And very passionate about what they believed in. And believed in being able to do something even though they had zero pretty much to start. So that strong sense of belief in, their, in themselves and their product. Anything else? Certainly something that we wanted you to take away from that was the idea around business models and where you make money and then also thinking about passion and energy and relationships and all of the things that have been touched on by all of the speakers over the last series. Specifically though in terms of business models, we would challenge you very strongly as your idea about your business opportunity takes more and more form for you to consider very carefully how and where you make money. So what is your business model? The implications for this are significant. It impacts on how many staff you need, what type of staff you need, where you sit in the supply chain, what assets you require, what capital you require, etc., etc. So being very, very clear how you make money. At what point do you exchange something for something and get dollars in the bank? So as you go through the development of your plan, as you start to think about your venture summary, think carefully about where you sit. And these are just some examples. It's not an exhaustive list, but it's a start. Where and how do you make money? And if you can get very clear about that, then your market, your customer, your suppliers, etc., become clearer as well. So think very carefully in that regard. So in terms of what we're looking at um, this evening is playing around um, with that idea of resources in a, a little bit more detail. And one of the things that, um, I, I guess a, a catchphrase, or a couple of catchphrases in terms of thinking about resources, is, is to be creative and parsimonious. In other words, to be incredibly stingy. And the idea here is, is to think cash last. Um, a number of entrepreneurs have said, that you know, one of the worst things that can happen is to have too much money um, straight up. Now, it's kind of a hard thing to get your head around when you've got this great idea and the more resources and the more money you've got, got the better. But it's to think really carefully, as Deb said, in terms of what does the business model mean for your idea, for your opportunity. So if you go back to the um, Kim Crawford Wines, Theirs was about minimising and controlling what they were doing, rather than maximising and owning. Having that virtual reality um, meant that they, they operated very well in an OPR basis, other people's resources. And the more you can use other people's resources, the more that they can have those assets, if you like, sitting on their balance sheet, rather than on your balance sheet, means that you've got a lot more opportunity to do other things with the resources that you, that you do have. Um, and those resources will be financial, they'll be the assets that you bring in, the people, which we'll talk a little bit more about um, next week in the business plan in terms of um, bringing that all together. So all of the things that we've been talking about, it's not that you think about resources on their own. You know, this is part of an overall process where, yeah, you have to think really carefully and clearly about what your business model is, about what all the people in your team bring to the table, and the networks and the relationships that they have in terms of what they can um, bring in terms of helping your idea develop into, into a successful opportunity. So to carry on that conversation, it's our pleasure to introduce the lovely and lots of other entities yeah, <laughs> that we might use, but we will carry on. Um, the lovely Andy Hamilton, CEO of the Ice House. What we've done is ask Andy to come along and, in a really informal basis, engage with you around firstly um, sharing what the Ice House is, what it does, what it's about, um, from very early stage startup businesses through to some um, New Zealand's mature and reasonably large SMEs, and then talk from his experience about where startup early stage businesses can get funding. So look at resources from that very raw dollar perspective, and then also touch on other resources in terms of getting advice